Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to class. Today we are going to talk about a very important and debated topic in social linguistics called dialects. So we are familiar with the term language with all its properties and characters. But when we talk about dialects, we have certain uh, social, political and non-linguistic references and this issue has been debated, is being debated till date, it continues till date. What is a dialect and uh, is it different from language? Is it inferior to language? How do we define a dialect? Right? Who speaks this variety? and how we can identify whether a person speaking a particular variety is language or dialect. It is a debatable question and we do not have a clear cut widely accepted, universally accepted definition of dialects because we have different frames of references in which we identify dialects. But again the results are debatable. So the dialogue or the debate on the difference between dialect and a language is much older and it continues till date. So while we classify or name or identify x language x as dialect, then it refers to linguistic attitude and values that we assign to the variety. So there is no linguistic argument ground for uh, naming it as a particular dialect. This whole idea of dialect is socially, culturally and politically rooted. We need to understand that. So there is no difference for a linguist for example, there is no difference between a language and a dialect because what you call a language has been in some time a variant, a dialect which has got uh, you know institutional support which has got a prestige value attached to it which has got the support of the elite of the society which is perceived as standard language no more a dialect but all languages that we speak are a favored dialect when we say favored dialect that means we are talking in terms of socio cultural political you know favors given or extended to a particular dialect which becomes standard dialect and language. But there is no universally accepted criterion for dis distinguishing two different languages from two dialects. However, uh, a number of rough measures exist to, to identify and classify language and dialects. However, these results are contradicting and always debatable. So we can summarize it at something like you know the distinction or dichotomy between language and a dialect is therefore subjective, arbitrary and depends on the user's preferred frame of reference. We will talk to this frame of references shortly. So as we stated, there is no real difference between dialect and language as Sapir observes. And if you look at Grierson's statement, he too observes in the course of survey, while Grierson, M. Grierson was doing survey uh, of Indian languages, he created volumes and a very, very systematic survey he conducted. And he came across this dichotomy during the survey and he refers and uh, you know to that and observes. In 
The course of survey, I quote, it has sometimes been difficult to decide whether a given form of speech is to be looked upon as an independent language or as a dialect of some other definite form of speech, I unquote. This is what Grierson observes. This dichotomy continues. Uh, so, the two words language and dialects are in this respect are like cup and a mug. So, we know cup and a mug, mountain and a hill. Now, we all understand the difference between a cup and a mug. We all perceptually you know understand the difference between cup and a mug of size and purpose. But can we draw a definite line of distinction between cup and a mug? We cannot. You know, so we cannot draw a line, distinct line or definite line between these two items, cup and mug, right? So fine couch for that matter. So it is perceptual. How you how you how you look at it. So if we increase the height of a cup to a level which is very less than the 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 mug height of the mug, or vice versa, we lower down the height of the mug to the extent that you know it doesn't become a cup. But what is that extent? It's difficult to point out and understand. So we go by extremes, you know. Like if I have a cup in its ideal extreme form, if I have a mug, is it it is in 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 its ideal extreme form? But the but the similarity between two is very close, and you know the area this between the two extremes, the area is so blurred, we cannot draw a distinct line. This applies to language and dialect as well. So, we cannot point out what are the particular qualities that a particular variety becomes a dialect. So, what are the particular characteristics of a dialect or uh, what are the things that does not qualify a particular variety to be a language, difficult to decide. So, it is more of the attitude of the speakers and uh, it is more of the perception or the value, prestige value or uh, you know uh, social linguistic attitude that we have towards the particular variety. However, there are some acceptable and I have put it in quotes, some acceptable in quotes notions about dialects. So, we roughly understand a dialect in terms of something like you know a dialect is a regional, temporal or social variety within a single language. Okay. We can take this as a uh, as an acceptable notion about dialect. Uh, something like you know it is the product of individuals geographical and class origin. So, we can take that as a as a broad acceptable notion. Okay, then it differs in grammar, pronunciation and vocabulary from the standard language which is in itself a socially favored language. So, a language X what, we, what the society or the speech community considers to be a language, this variety will have syntactic, morphological and phonological variation. Okay. Uh, so, a dialect is a variation of language sufficiently different to be considered a separate entity, but not different enough to be classed as a separate language. So, you have some overlaps in terms of syntactic structures, in terms of morphological similarities, process processor similarities, in terms of pronunciation and accent. So, it is not dif you know, different enough to be, to, be, to be regarded as a separate language or not even identical enough to be regarded as the same. Right? So, this gray area continues in understanding these two different concepts dialect and language. As a linguist, we do not differentiate because all dialects qualify equally to be called and classified as a language. So, what we call dialects is something you know which is which is uh, 
it represents the bias towards a particular variety. So, there is no qualitative linguistic measures to indicate whether difference of a dialect becomes difference of language. The issue is political and social and of course, not linguistic. Now, we will come to the linguistic ecology of India where this question is, is and, and in fact, you know, in multilingual societies like India, this question is uh, very dynamic and uh, difficult to answer because we have different attitude and perceptions about different varieties. And uh, the issue of language is very emotional, you know, uh, we identify. So, it, it is a very vigorous marker of our identity. The speakers are very sensitive towards it. So, it is a very sensitive issue and uh, particularly multilingual societies like India will come to Indian scenario in a, in a while. So, everybody speaks a dialect. Language is a very, uh, you know, a, a notion, you know. We speak a particular variety of it. The language nobody speaks. We speak a variety, a dialect, which is not seen as some kind of deviation from the norms of standard language. Take the example of Hindi for that matter. Now, which Hindi do we call the real Hindi language, standard Hindi language? Hindi spoken in Lucknow, Hindi spoken in let's say Delhi, Hindi spoken in Patna, Hindi spoken in Guwahati, Hindi spoken in Chennai or Hindi spoken in Bangalore, Hindi spoken in Mumbai, which Hindi is the real Hindi? That is a debatable question. So, which Hindi you call a standard Hindi? And what about these other varieties? Right? What about the Hindi of Mumbai for that matter? What about the Hindi of Guwahati for that matter? What do you call it? Is it Hindi? And if at all it is Hindi, we can we, we, we find a lot, lot of lexical differences, lots of uh, pronunciation differences, right? And in extreme cases like Dakini Hindi, Urdu, Hindi and Urdu, you find a lot of syntactic differences. How do we classify them? That is a, that's a question. Do we believe that Gujarati is spoken, the same Gujarati is spoken all over Gujarat or same Tamil is spoken all over Tamil Nadu? Debatable question, right. Uh, so, there is no linguistic justification for saying that one dialect is better and another and it is it's, it's all about social judgment, it is all about you know, uh, our judgmental value that we assign to a particular variety. As a linguist, we do not distinguish and we do not put them in a hierarchy, which language is superior, which language is inferior. All languages are equal, equally competent enough to be standard language. It is a, it's an, it's a, it's a deliberate attempt to assign uh, institutional support to a particular variety or a particular variant or a dialect which, which emerges as standard language. Otherwise, there is no linguistic reasons why a particular variety should not be treated as proper language. Uh, dialects are dialects because of linguistic, dialects are not dialects because of uh, linguistic reasons, but because of political and cultural reasons. It is customary to describe them as varieties of a language according to the users. Right. Now, this is what I was talking about. I just wanted to quote from Census of India 2011 and the data and the returns will, will create another round of debate, you know, because if you look at the returns, number of returns as different languages by the respondents, the number is almost, you know, unimaginable. You cannot imagine the number, you cannot guess the number. Can you guess the number, how many varieties people have responded and they all claim it to be their mother tongue, they all claim it to be a separate language. How, what do we do? So, I will quote from Census of India 2011 and the source is uh, you know, Census of India 2011, page 4, paper 1 of 2018 
section language, India states and union territories, table C 16. I quote from there, what do they say? I quote, at the 2011 census, the number of such raw returns of mother tongues has totaled to 19,569. Can you believe? 19,569. A rough estimate says that we have 6,000, approximately 6,000 languages in the whole world. And look at the census. The respondents return 19,569 varieties as mother tongue. Amazing, amazing number. That talks about the identity issues, linguistic identity issues of these speakers and how they look at their own variety and how do they identify with that. I quote again, since mother tongue tongues are returned in the census are basically the designations provided by the respondents of the linguistic mediums in which the respondents think they communicate they need not be in identical with the actual linguistic mediums. Now, this actual linguistic mediums and perceived linguistic mediums is debatable. I continue quoting again, for assessing the correlation between the mother tongues and designations of the census and for presenting the numerous raw returns in terms of their linguistic affiliations to actual languages and dialects. 19,569 raw returns were subjected to thorough linguistic scrutiny, edit and rationalization. This resulted in 1,369 rationalized mother tongues and 1,474 names which were treated as unclassified and relegated to other mother tongue category. The 1369, 1369 rationalized mother tongues were further classified following the usual linguistic methods for rational groupings based on available linguistic information. Thus, an inventory of classified mother tongues returned by 10,000 or more speakers are grouped under appropriate languages at all India level, wherever possible, has been prepared for final presentations of 2011 mother tongues data. The total number of languages arrived at is 121. So, let us see the idea, the data from 19,569 to the final tally of 121 languages. What do you do with the rest? How do we treat them? What do you understand by that? And why you have so many returns beyond your imagination? Government of India in census 2011 claims 121 languages in the country spoken over all states and Indian territories. And here you have a raw data that gives you 19,569 languages as mother tongue, varieties as mother tongue. Now, do we call it call them languages? So, do we go by the users and how they perceive it and the value they assign? So, this is a debatable question. Now, as I told you, deciding upon dialect and language whether a particular variety X is a language or a dialect, we have certain frames of references. So, we do not give a definite definition and category assigned to it, but we have certain frames of references, for example, linguistic distance between these two varieties, then mutual intelligibility, another frame of reference and socio-political factors. So, these are three main frame of references where we can decide whether x is dialect or language. So, let us go to each of them 
one after the other. So, when we say linguistic distance, what does it mean? An important criterion for categorization of varieties of languages right, uh, is determining the linguistic distance between two varieties. So, two languages with completely different syntactic structures would have a high linguistic distance, while a language with very few differences from another may be considered a dialect or a sibling of that language. What do we call a Hindi and Urdu? It is a political question, but linguistically we hardly find any syntactic difference. Right? So, if you look at the linguistic distance between Hindi and Urdu, are they two languages? Are they two varieties of the same language? Are they two dialects? What do we call? And this is a very sensitive question because if you go by linguistic distance, we hardly find any linguistic distance between these two, two languages. We know them as two different languages, not because we find linguistic distance, we know them as two separate languages because of socio cultural, political, and religious regions. So, it is all about the frame of reference that you take to classify and distinguish a language and a dialect. But so it 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 is a it's a it's a sib these are these two varieties are siblings, Hindi and Urdu are siblings in that case, in that frame of reference. Linguistic distance may be used to determine language, families, and language siblings. So can we consider Hindi and Urdu to be siblings? because they do not have linguistic distance. You know, uh, some differences that people refer to is the way we use scripts. Okay, the Hindi uses Devanagari script, Urdu uses you know Nasalik or Bush Arabic script. Hindi in certain cases draws heavily from Sanskrit origin and Urdu draws heavily from Bush Arabic origin. But still, if you look at the structures, if you look at the grammatical patterns, if you look at the agreement patterns, we find no difference. So, except for the orthographic visual representation, we hardly find any difference or possibly you may find a difference, let us say in case of uh, you know genitive phrases like you know Sher e Punjab and in Hindi we say Punjab ka Sher and a few sounds that, that are different. Otherwise, the linguistic distance between Hindi and Urdu remains very minimal. Right? So, this is one frame of reference that if two varieties have high linguistic distance in terms of syntactic differences, morphological differences, phonological differences, then they are two separate languages. If it is low, there may be variety of any x language, a dialect. Then another frame of reference that we refer to in understanding the concept called dialect is mutual intelligibility. Right. So, to what extent speakers of two different varieties are able to understand each other? To what extent they share the linguistic norms? To what extent they are able to communicate effortlessly? Right? That is another frame of reference in determining whether it is a dialect. So, mutual intelligibility is one criterion which is purely linguistic and two varieties are said to be dialects of the same language if being a speaker of one variety confers sufficient knowledge to understand and be understood by a speaker of the other. Otherwise, they are said to be different languages. So, if they are a, you know able to understand each other easily without any much effort and if the, the two speakers of two varieties are able to communicate effectively right, without certain reservations, they understand each other, they can predict. So, this mutual intelligibility leads to the conclusion that these two varieties are dialects of the same language. So, this is another frame of reference. 
So, further problems with this criterion are that mutual intelligibility occurs in varying degrees. Now, the question is to what extent I am able to understand the other variety or to what extent the speaker of other variety is able to understand me. It is a degree, it is a varying degree. So, what is that exact degree of intelligibility which determines it to be a dialect again debatable. And that is difficult to distinguish between prior family with the other variety. So, this, this question remains confusing and we cannot have a clear cut answer, but broadly if they are able to understand we say that these two varieties are dialects. If they are not able to understand each other we say that there are two separate languages, but there are certain cases where it may be possible that these two variety varieties because of some historical reasons may be separated for a longer period of time. So, even if they are derived from the same language they may not be intelligible. So, as I mentioned such frames of references are problematic and they do not give us a very clear cut idea. However, they are useful to determine broadly uh, you know dialect and a language. Now, what do you mean by socio political factors? It is purely attitude of the speakers, it is attitude of the speakers towards other languages and attitude of other language speakers towards this particular variety. It is social, it is political, right? It is it, it has got uh, exclusivity, right? So, in many societies, however, a particular dialect often the sociolect of the elite comes to be identified as standard or in quotes proper version of a language. I keep on repeating the sentence why we put in quotes because we cannot subscribe to these ideas, but there are certain conventional practices which exist. So, it has something to do with the power, it has something to do with the status, it has something to do with the uh, you know socio political share of the speakers of that particular variety. So, elite class of a society, so the variety of the elite class is spoken by a particular elite class right may be considered standard language and uh, there is no linguistic reason for that it is purely political. So, as a result of this in some contexts the term dialect refers specifically to varieties with low social status. So, this is again problematic because governed by our perceptions and power equations, a status assigned to a particular variety and prestige assigned to a particular variety, dialects are used as derogatory terms. So, dialect may be a derogatory term for a language. So, it is relegated with low prestige value. And uh, there is another very, very widely held concept that dialects are do not have written forms. So, languages which have written forms are standard languages and dialects do not have written forms. Dialects are not taught in schools. So, they are not good variety to teach in schools. Dialects do not have written literature. Now, we need to understand that a particular variety which does not have written system or we do not have sizable body of literature we do not have institutional presence of these varieties in our schools, in our media and in, in, in administrative you know offices. It has nothing to do with the, the linguistic properties of the variety. It is all about favoring a particular dialect which is being used, taught and practiced by the elite and powerful, taught in the school, grammars are created, this a whole process of standardization you know you know uh, elevates that particular dialect to be standard or in quotes proper language. But what are the you know widely held notions about dialect something like you know if they have no standard or codified form again the standard and codified form who makes it a standard it is a deliberate attempt by the system or institutions which favor a particular dialect standardize it and use it for various purposes. 
they are codified. Dictionaries are created, grammars are created, books are created, encyclopedia is created. So, they get institutional support and a particular dialect is elevated as language. Second such notion is if they are if they are rarely or never used in writing that is another notion about dialects. If the speakers of given language do not have a state of their own it refers to power, political power. If they lack prestige with respect to some other often standardized variety. So, sense of inferiority is assigned uh, a perception of inferiority is assigned to a particular variety that is a dialect. And the status of language is not solely determined by linguistic criteria, but it is also the result of historical and political development. And this is true to all such languages. For example, Constitution of India has listed 22 languages in its schedule 8, which are considered as official languages of India. So, Hindi is official language of India. English is associate official of language of India and 22 languages listed in schedule 8 are considered official languages of India. What about even 121 that government of India in census 2011 claims languages. So, 99 languages are languages which are not scheduled languages, but again go back to the you know, or approximately 1400 varieties which are classified as others. What are these? So, the question of language and dialect is always debatable and uh, it is a linguistic attitude that determines, it is the frame of reference that determines whether it is a dialect or a language. But in linguistics, in social linguistics or for us as an enlightened informed people, there is no difference between a language and a dialect. Language is a favored dialect, languages are socially, politically and institutionally supported variety, right. We all speak a dialect. I am speaking English, I am speaking a dialect of English, right. But because of socio-political reasons, we consider a particular dialect to be standard variety and which has written form or it is written, it has uh, dictionaries, it has encyclopedia, it, it is used in media, it is used in uh, administration and this becomes standard language. Otherwise, all dialects so called or all varieties right, uh, equally qualify to be a language. It is just an accident that a particular dialect is favored and emerges at language, the rest of them are called dialects of the same language. So, I hope the idea of dialect is clear now and in social linguistics, we prefer to use the term variety, speech variety. Lebovian tradition will talk about in some other lecture where he has used variety. Right. So, dialect is, is somehow has some negative connotation and a derogatory term assigned to a particular speech variety which is considered low prestige variety, but that is not uh, you know appropriate explanation and uh, there is no linguistic merit in such a belief and in such linguistic attitude there is absolutely no linguistic uh, grounding, but this is how we perceive and understand dialects. Based on the geographical location of a particular variety, we refer to terms like regional dialects. So, regional dialects are spoken by people of a particular geographical area within a speech community, for example, Cockney in London, right that is that is a regional dialect and we and so many others in the Indian context. Sociolect refers to uh, you know a variety spoken by members of a particular group or a stratum of a speech community 
while a variety of language used at particular stage in its historical development may be termed as temporal dialects such as Prakrit and Pali in ancient India, right, where Sanskrit was the standard language. So, with these uh, closing notes, we can understand dialect as a speech variety which is classified uh, you know because of socio political factors and mind you not linguistic factors as a low prestige variety spoken by a particular class in a particular language uh, in a particular land or geographical location uh, or possibly in a particular point of history of that speech community. So, we will talk about speech varieties and variations more in next videos and we will see why social linguists use the term variety not a dialect because dialect is a controversial terminology ascribed to assigned to a particular variety. So, thank you very much and we will meet in the next class continue our debate and discussion.